Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome an international entrepreneur, executive director of Nine Boxes and 3 by 3 Brooke Chapman. 3 by 3 is big on business strategy and has trademarked Nine Boxes mythology. In short, the Nine Boxes framework helps build marketing strategy. What is a marketing strategy? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? Oddly enough, I've never spoken on marketing strategy before. And in truth, I know little about marketing strategy. Marketing strategy is a plan of action designed to promote and sell a product or service. And I have covered various aspects such as marketing versus advertising and what is a brand guideline on the Shades of E blog. But about marketing strategy feel like I cannot talk about marketing strategy without talking about the four P's, product, price, placement, and promotion. A quick overview for those unfamiliar with the four P's of marketing. According to Investopedia, Neil Borden, an advertising professor at Harvard, created the idea of the four P's in 1950s and published an article in 1940 titled The Concept of Marketing Mix to show the use of advertising tactics to engage consumers. Eventually, the concept landed with this dude named Jerome McCarthy, a marketing professor at Michigan State University around the 1960s, who refined Borden's concept to co-write a book, Basic Marketing, a managerial approach, and giving birth to the marketing four P's. I'm hearing there are more four P's floating around, but I'm not going to talk about those. The marketing mix four P's. Product. The product should fit the task consumers want it for. It should work and it should be what the consumers are expecting to get. Product is a baseline of the marketing strategy. No marketer should move forward without some understanding of what the product is because the goal of the marketing strategy is to help define in the simplest terms possible what the product is and why the consumer should find it of value. For the entrepreneur, it is important to understand the product life cycle and have a plan in place of how to promote the next product. Place. A product should be available from where your target consumer finds it easiest to shop. Good marketing plan has the brand positioned in high visible areas. Maybe that is in front of a supermarket, a billboard, etc. Again, it all goes back to the understanding of the target audience and where they will likely see the place, product, or service. Our competitor bought a billboard in front of our hospital. You don't think that caught our attention? Price. The product should always be seen as representing good value for money. One of the toughest jobs for a marketer may be linking a real product to a perceived price while examining supply chain costs, discounts, competitors, prices, etc. The marketing strategy will help determine when seasoned products should be going on discount to draw more consumers or give off the appearance of exclusivity. Promotion, advertising, public relations, sales promotion, personal selling, and in most recent times, social media are all key communication tools for an organization. Listen, out of sight, out of mind. If an entrepreneur is not tactfully or organically promoting their product or service, nobody will know about it. These four items will be outlined in a marketing strategy, and that is why this is important. Having a sound marketing strategy with a value proposition can help keep a business aligned with their core values, the reason consumers were attracted to the product or service in the first place or why they should be attracted to the same products or service now. In short, a marketing strategy is a blueprint of marketing activities throughout a specific period of time and this next entrepreneur is here to help guide the entrepreneur throughout this process. Just another entrepreneur helping other entrepreneurs in a community of entrepreneurs. Thank you and hope you enjoy this episode. The Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. started her career as a television journalist before moving into corporate communication. After years of experience as a marketing strategist, she created a new company. Please welcome the executive director of 3x3 and 9 Boxes, Brooke Chapman.
This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Brooke Chapman from 3x3. Brooke, how are you doing? I'm really well, thanks. Thanks for having me. You know, me, me and Brooke have been chatting, and folks, I got I to gotta tell you, she is in the future. She's literally in the future. She is a day ahead of us because she is actually calling in from Australia. Yeah, long way away. Yeah, it's Friday morning here. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't think I can share too much about what's happened in the future yet, but um, <laughs> let's see how we go through the podcast. <laughs> A few things might reveal themselves. <laughs> so, Brooke, please, first, before we get into uh, three by three, would love to kind of hear who is Brooke Chapman. Give us a little yeah, bit. Yeah, great. Sure. So, uh, yeah, as you said, I'm Australian, born and bred here uh, in, in Oz. Uh, I'm a mom of three. Uh, I've been a, uh, I started my career as a television journalist and then, you know, really, you know, moved around a bit, was in PR, was in corporate communications. And then I found myself in marketing, which is my passion. I love it. Um, and then now, obviously, uh, with with two of um, my dear friends and colleagues, uh, we've started three by three and we're on a journey of, of really trying to make the business scale and, and make it work at a global level. Yeah. In fact, you're kind of your task with revenue and growth for your company, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I'm all about, uh, you know, increasing the awareness of what we're doing and, uh, you know, developing new partnerships and uh, making sure that this, this, you know, framework that we've developed is really getting out there and, and helping small to medium businesses with their marketing strategies. Yeah. So let's, let's give the audience a little background. What is three by three? Yeah, so look, I, I mentioned it before, we, there's three of us, uh, three directors in the business. Um, we, in our corporate roles, what we noticed was that um, the big end of town, those enterprises have got marketing strategy covered. They've got someone great, you know, in a head of marketing position or a CMO role, um, which is excellent. But for SMBs, so thinking about businesses that are turning over, you know, a few million dollars, anywhere up to $100 million, they may not necessarily have access to that corporate level strategy when it comes to marketing. So what we see in today's uh, business landscape is a lot of SMBs jumping straight into tactics and with mixed results. Uh, so, you know, we work with businesses to really take it back to basics. What are the foundational um, pieces of work you need to do to make yourself fit for purpose in a marketing sense so that when you actually press go on some of those marketing initiatives and you start spending money, you've got a high degree of confidence um, that it's going to work. So it's a framework, it's proven, it's repeatable, and it's about working on all the areas of your marketing uh, and sales uh, function in your business uh, rather than just going campaign to campaign and, and being highly tactical. And, and just for clarification, SMBs is a small to medium sized business. Correct. Yeah, correct. So, um, you know, we, we just really wanted to give um, those business owners, you know, on, on a smaller scale access to, to fantastic strategy. So that's really what we're all about, making it equitable for all and seeing, um, you know, great marketing um, results for, for smaller businesses, because a lot of them, by the time they get to me and I speak to them about supporting them, they've got some horror stories and, you know, they've wasted a lot of money. They've, they've worked with some agencies that, that maybe haven't done the right thing uh, and, and they really want a step change. And, and how do they get out of that bad cycle of, um, you know, spending money, spray and pray, it doesn't work. Um, you know, how, how, how do they change that? And the answer is through strategy. So how did you kind of get to this point? How did you, how did, how did, you, how did we get to the three by three? It's been an interesting journey. So um, one of my co-directors, uh, we met about 10 years ago uh, and, and she had actually come up with the framework. Um, so, you know, she, she was a former CMO um, out of News Corp in London. Um, she started a consulting business with, with small to medium businesses and she saw this gap. Uh, and she came up with the, the nine boxes framework as this, this way to tackle strategy for smaller businesses. And we met, um, I was in a CMO role. I was quite young. I was probably a little bit inexperienced for the position. And I, I met Deb and um, I was a client. I hired her and I said, you know, come and help me build this strategy uh, because I needed to learn how to be strategic. And um, it really changed my world and the way that I thought. Um, and then together we really refined 
the program together. We brought in our third director, Nicola. Um, and then, yeah, we look, it was probably about 18 months ago, we, we decided that we were really going to go for it and, and create a business out of this and see if we could scale it. So why did you decide, you know, you're, you're in kind of corporate setting, you're a CMO. Why did you decide to say, you know what, I'm going to leave the corporate world, which is for when you think about it, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more easier, right? We have those, those benefits that we tend to not have in the entrepreneurship world. Why, why did you make that jump? It was not an easy decision. Well, it was and it wasn't. Um, on the one hand, you know, it, it, all of those things you mentioned, it, it's, it's a big step to leave corporate. Yeah. Uh, there, there's, yeah. a, there's a feeling of safety in corporate and, um, you know, all of the benefits that go along with it. But I was really ready for a challenge. I kind of have a hard time sitting still and I'm always thinking <laughs> about the next thing. So, and, and I'm all about growth. So I think eventually anyone that knows me probably thought that I was going to end up in my own business at some stage. Um, but I think really when it came down to it, um, it, it was this passion and, and all three of us have this, this, this passion for wanting to improve our industry. Marketing should be transparent. It should be easy to understand. Everybody should be able to be successful at marketing. But we've got a scenario now where it's seen as a gray area, a bit of a black hole, and, and people have lost faith in marketing. Um, and, and many of pe the people in our industry are, se are seen as a little bit dodgy, uh, you know, fast talkers, and, and we want to change that. We want people to have faith in marketing and to see it as a critical function of their business. So it was really that passion. I, I knew I couldn't put it down until we tried to, you know, get, get this business going and, 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 and get this product out there. So um, I felt compelled. You know, I, I, when I think of what you just said right there, you know, in regards to marketing and, and trying to change the optics of it, because it's true. I work in healthcare and our marketing department gets beat up a lot for various reasons. And sometimes not of the reasons that have anything to do with marketing, but it gets kind of directed at the marketing team. And, 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 you know, I think one of the things is how, how do you kind of change that mindset? How do you change people from thinking like, Hey, we're here to be a supporting member versus the punching bag. Yeah, look, it, it's a really common problem. And I think, you know, I've had th three CMO roles and in all of them, when I came in and I started speaking to the business and, and the key stakeholders, one of the key things that I heard back was we just, we just don't know what marketing does. What are they doing in there? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the reality was they were working really hard, yeah. but the business was not having meaningful conversations about marketing. It, marketing didn't have a seat at the table. So every month the leadership team and the board would get together to talk about the P&L and the finances and operations and people, but marketing doesn't get spoken about in a meaningful, robust way. So it, it is really about how do we have a better conversation about marketing at all levels of the business? board leadership team and, and all of all of the key stakeholder groups and the operational teams in the business so um, we say all the time that 50 percent of what we do is marketing strategy and 50 percent is education we have to educate stakeholders on what good strategic marketing is and we have to talk about what we're doing and why so if you can improve the education and you can improve the communication you're really going to go a long way to breaking down some of those barriers and changing some of those attitudes towards the discipline. That's, that's very true. You know, one thing I try to tell people, marketing is every single one of your employees. Every single one of oh. your employees is in fact a marketer, right? Totally. Their social media pages, they're, they're going, when they even just take a photo of your campus because they got there in the morning to work and it looks beautiful, that's free marketing right there, right? And, and mm -hmm. to your point, Getting that, I, I think there's a there's a huge disconnect sometimes between you know executive leaders and what marketing's doing, because we, there is that sense like what are you doing back there, what 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 would you kind of say to an executive leader if they did ask that question? What is marketing doing back there? Well, we, we, we need to be better as a profession at, at, at showing what we're doing. And, and that's where having a framework like ours, there are nine core areas of sales and marketing. And you, we should be able to pinpoint at any time what's happening in each of those nine areas and how are we trying to improve it. Um, you know, I was just speaking about this with a client the other day. Um, you know, they're wanting to get campaigns running. They're want, wanting to, you know, get those commercial returns. But successful marketing is not just about the leads coming into the business. 
it, it's about doing the right things, you know, a collection of the right things for a long period of time. And that's where you get that sustainable growth. Um, so it's, it's really about, you know, where are we at with each of those nine areas? How are we trying to improve? Having documented strategies and tracking everything that we do. It's not good enough anymore to just be able to say, oh, look, it's kind of hard to connect A to B you know, with marketing, there's lots of tools now that we can use to do that. So we, we need to be better. Um, but I think just to, to, you know, hit on a point that you made before around, you know, marketing really having a part in, in the whole business, you know, it's, it's when you walk into a business and the, the uh, experience you have with the receptionist, it's when you call in and how long you're sitting on that line. It's, you know, marketing needs to really think about every element of the customer experience and how that could be you know, seamless and smooth for the customer. So, you know, we need to take that macro view, but then be able to report on it at a micro level. And that's, that's a great point. And, and more importantly is it's, it's not the perception of what the staff sees and the executive leadership sees. It's the perception of what your guest or clientele or however you want to define them. It's, it's their perception that matters. So kind of doing the, you know, the, uh, what, what is it, what do they call them? The, um, the secret Santas, you know, kind of being like a secret Santa to your place. Go there for a day. If you're a clinic, go and sit through the check-in process. If you're a sales, go walk to the store and see how your sales associates are working with you. You know, all these different variations, but it kind of takes like a bit of a grassroots effort to understand what those issues are. You know, you know, Brooke, one of the things you mentioned um, a few times is is this this nine box method. Elaborate on that. What what is the nine box method? Yeah, sure. So, you know, there, there, there are nine core areas of marketing and sales. And like I mentioned before, you, you need to have a firm grip on all of them. If you have one of them that's underperforming for your business, it compromises the whole piece. So you, you do need to be across all of them and working towards goals. Um, we split it into three categories. Um, the, the first uh, group of boxes is the find boxes. So finding and engaging with your customers. Um, the first box is position. So, you know, you, you were talking before about, you know, internally your culture and your values and your position. Uh, is that aligned with what you're putting out into the community and how your customers see you? Um, are you really clear around, you know, what you do, the type of business you want to be, and are you communicating that effectively? Are you getting an edge on your competitors with your position? So that's a really important part. And we spend a lot of time on that box because it's the foundation. Next is capability. Um, how do you actually do your marketing? Who are your people, uh, both internally and then your external suppliers, uh, your strategy, your budget, uh, your platforms and processes? Um, what is helping you to actually do the marketing? Um, the next box is channel. So a really critical one. And, and most people, when they think of marketing, think of channel. You know, your website, your social media platforms, uh, your advertising strategy. So, you know, are you in the right channels and engaging with customers in a meaningful way? The next three boxes are our convert boxes. Uh, and that focus on, focuses on the buyer's journey, first of all, which is critical. Um, do we understand what the pathway to purchase is for customers? And um, do we know those moments that matter? Where do we need to be present in that pathway uh, and influencing decisions? So where do they wanna have conversations with us? Um, next is communication. So everything to do with your brand, all of your touch points, you know, from that receptionist right through to closing the sale uh, and beyond in terms of service, really plotting that out because the buyer's journey is different for different uh, stakeholders. So the communication has to, has to be um, different as well. And then lastly, starting conversations. So how sales and marketing work together, uh, who's responsible for what, how do sales and marketing support each other, and you know who, who's looking after each stage of that customer journey. And then lastly, it's our uh, deliver boxes. So first of all, products and services. Do you have what the market wants to buy? Are you innovating? Are you leading? Um, are there any gaps in your offering? Uh, client management, which is around knowing your good and your bad customers and filtering them in or out accordingly. And then lastly, client service. So we should always be marketing to our existing customers, building lifetime value with them and encouraging more investment. So uh, it's always easier, Gabriel, to serve customers you already have uh, than to, to bring new ones into the mix. And, you know, marketing is not easy. I'm not going to we're, we're not trying to sugarcoat it and say this is easy. But you did simplify it very nicely, right? And how did you kind of get to this process where you really kind of simplified it in a way? It does 
Because I'm looking at this already and thinking, okay, this is where my role aligns. This is where marketing roles aligns. This is where the production roles, and this is where the executive team aligns, right? And so you're kind of starting to see in these boxes of like, who's who's in that position? How did you simplify it? How did you kind of break it down? Yeah, look, marketing is an incredibly broad discipline. There's so many things you could be doing and there's a lot of jumping around, you know, we should be doing this or maybe that's not working. Let's jump over here. We, we knew that there needed to be a way to systemize it and also to engage with, uh, you know, marketing has to engage with every area of the business. So products and services you're engaging with, you know, the R&D team uh, and the operations team. Uh, client service, obviously the customer service team with channel, you know, you're working with sales and business development. So we needed to have a framework that everyone could engage with and really understand marketing, break it down, make it transparent. And, And what are the key things in each of those boxes that you need to have? What's your checklist? So, you know, we just wanted to be systemized around it the same way as you would be with other business planning processes. Um, So that was the approach that we took and, and the results is the nine boxes. Now, is this the first business you created? Yes, it is. Yeah. So how did you guys, did you, uh, did you guys finance it through like grassroot effort? Did you guys go venture capital? How are you financing it? At the moment, it's completely funded uh, just privately and, and yeah, bootstrapping. And, uh, you know, at the moment, you know, our growth is funding our future growth. So uh, that's our strategy for now. But uh, we do have global aspirations. Oh. We want this to be a big business. That's so, yeah, you know, there, there, there is, we are thinking about what that looks like, I love uh, it. you know, as we grow. So tell me what, this is your first one. What has been hard about starting this business? I think it's just um, how broad the role is when you're running a business and you're trying to grow a business. Uh, Obviously, I came out of large corporates where there was IT teams and HR teams (laughs) and there was people to support and I could really focus on marketing. Um, I can't, I can't be a lane swimmer anymore. I can't just focus on the product and the marketing. Um, we, we have to put out our own fires. We have to think about growth. We, you know, the buck stops with us. So I, I think it's around just that, um, that responsibility when you're trying to build a business in the right way, you're trying to look after your people, you're trying to create a great culture, you're trying to deliver to clients. There's a lot going on every day. Um, but with that, it's 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 a highly enjoy, enjoyable journey. It has been for us so far, anyway. You know, I just I just learned a new phrase, lame swimmer. I'm totally I've never heard that before. I'm gonna start using that. That's great. I was like, <laughs> when you said that, it's lame swimmer. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. Don't be such a lame swimmer. Oh man. Well, oh. It, <laughs> <laughs> we, we 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 do talk about it quite a bit because you know you you do you you become a lame swimmer, right? Like you stay in your lane, but when you're running a business, you have to be able to fix your own computer sometimes and you have to be able to you know have a really strong grip on finance yeah. uh, you have to be able to to recruit well and and make people happy when they come to work with you you have to be able to do a lot of things um so yeah we 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 stay in our lane when it comes to um what we deliver with our product we're very much strategy focused but we kind of have to be across the whole pool when it comes to the business yeah you kind of have to be the back, a jack of all trade master of none especially it true business truly is like the duck right? Everything looks calm on the outside. The clientele is what they're seeing, but underneath we're going crazy, right? Swimming like crazy. Now, you know, yeah. what has been, has, has there been anything easy about this process? I think probably the easiest thing has been, um, just, just staying true to our purpose. We've got, we, we're very purpose driven. We've got very strong values and seeing that come to life when we deliver to clients has been amazing seeing the change in the businesses having small to medium businesses say you know i spent two hundred thousand dollars on marketing last year and it didn't do anything for us we've been working with you for six months and look at what we've done you know that 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 has been great um and, and for us that's why we keep getting up every morning and we keep coming in and and doing the work so that's been um the easy part is staying true to our purpose because we're, we we know that we're on the right track you know you you've you left corporate the corporate world, right? You, you said you have a family, you were, you're talking about how you woke up at one in the morning, you're doing a podcast the other day, which is this insane. What motivates you? What keeps you going? What pushes you? Uh, it's, it's that passion for the purpose that, that we, we really want to make this industry better. We want to clean it up. We want to make marketing easy to understand and easy for everybody to access and do well at. 
Um, and then it's also our team, you, you know, we're, we're in, I'm incredibly close with my other two directors. We always show up for each other. If someone is feeling it and is a bit down, the other two pull them up. So, you know, we, we that that is a motivating factor around the team and what we're trying to build here. But yeah, overall, I would really say it's the purpose that that motivates us. And and, and we really want to get stuck into this. We're, we're not where we, we want to do it. I love it. And now is there any part of the business that like keeps you up at night or that you think about the most? Look, I think, I think it just comes back to what I was saying before the, the, the crushing responsibility of trying to build that business and you're responsible for people's livelihoods. And um, I think one of the things that I've come to understand is that I don't have to have all the answers, but I need to know where to get the answers. And that's been a really tough lesson for me because I have spent a few sleepless nights thinking, how am I going to get out of this? What are we going to do here? Um, and you have to have a network you can reach out to. You have to have people that can support you, that have trod, trod this path before and can let you know you're going to get through the other side. Um, so that's sort of that, that that's a recent um, revelation that I've had, but that's what's kept me up in the in the in the past, just wondering how we're we're gonna solve certain problems. Um, and now I know I just need to, to get support. You know, you mentioned something right there, network. I, I, I talk pretty consistently about the importance of network on this show. You mentioned that you just kind of found the realization of the importance of networking. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? How did you find that aha moment of networking? Yeah, look, it, it was a, it was a conversation I had with, with one of my fellow directors and, and I was like, Oh, you know, you, you've, you're, look at all the things you've solved this week. Like that's, that's fantastic. And, you know, I just, I just kind of, you know, I want to solve, solve problems at that rate. And she says, Brooke, I don't have all the answers. I've, I just, I just know who to go to for help. And, and I thought that's how I've got to frame it up. Um, and I, I then became really proactive in terms of who is going to be my network. Who's my mentor. How do I develop a, um, a group of um, peers who are maybe a few steps ahead in this business building uh, process that we're in that can say, oh, this is how I handled that. And this, these are the pitfalls of that choice. And yeah, you know, I, I really want to learn from that experience. So I have since got myself involved in, in a networking group, uh, in a, a group of tight individuals that I can grow with over the next few years. Um, and, and also just benefiting, you know, we've got an amazing team of about 20 people in our business. We all have different perspectives. It's not just mine or the other director's responsibility. Everyone has got to be on board with growing this thing. So really making sure that, you know, a problem shared is a problem solved. Uh, and, 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 and that's been something over the last couple of months that has really helped me. You know, you mentioned you created this network, right. To kind of help you progress in the future. Where do you see three by three in the next five years? We, we have ambitious growth goals, unashamedly. So um, we, we want to be the global language of marketing. When people talk about marketing, they want to do a nine boxes education program. They, they want to speak to a nine boxes accredited strategist. We become the industry standard. So, you know, we, we want to be global at the moment. We've got operations in Australia, New Zealand, the UK, we're soon to, to, to have some strategists in the U S so we want to be all over the world. And uh, you know, we, that, that, that is our aspiration. So, you know, when, when people hear nine boxes, they think marketing. I love it. Now, before we go, give the listeners at home some advice, either from the marketing world or entrepreneur world. What is some advice you have for the listeners at home? Uh, for listeners at home, um, I would say that, um, you know, marketing is a critical element for any business. So for all of the entrepreneurs listening, I'm sure that you've had some experiences, good, bad, and ugly with marketing. Um, if you want to improve and, uh, you know, you would like some, some free advice, I would encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, Brooke Trapman 3x3. You could also go to our website, which is uh, T-H-R-E-E-B-Y number three uh, dot com. And you can actually access a free online benchmark. So it's a diagnostic tool, which will tell you how you're performing in marketing at the moment. It's 45 questions. Every business should be asking about their marketing. And then I'd be happy to jump on a call with you and, and give you some commentary around what those scores mean uh, and what you need to do moving forward. So please connect and uh, let's, let's get started on the journey. Love it. 
Brooke. In fact, folks listening, all this information, again, we're going to have it on the Shades of E newsletter. So please subscribe to the newsletter so you get this information. I'm going to have information about the 3 by 3 have information about how to get that assessment for your marketing tool. I know there's a lot of individuals that probably own companies that are listening to this, that are thinking of themselves. This is very interesting. I already checked it out on their website. Again, there's the diagram there, the the nine box. Please go check it out. Brooke, thank you so much uh, for taking your time. Uh, eight in the morning in the future. I hope I hope the future is treating you well in Australia. Really do thank you for taking the time for being with us today. Uh, for those folks at home, please follow me on the shades of e.com. You can also visit the shades or you can also follow me on the shades of e on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and TikTok. Have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit the shades of e.com.